Hey you guys, this is Little Pug Games, and today we're going to talk about Binding of Isaac. It's a huge game with tons of weapons and items and things to explore and bosses to beat. And another big part about the game is its procedurally generated dungeon. It's a huge part of the game, and today I wanted to talk about that and how it's implemented. So, without further ado, let's get started. And shout out to Professor Pug for the slides. All right. Procedural dungeon generation. What is it exactly? So, it's the generation of a map or a dungeon by following a certain set of rules. And the important part here to notice is a certain set of rules or procedures. You have to follow some rule set to create your map or dungeon. And a bunch of different games use this. Nuclear Throne, Spelunky, Binding of Isaac, which is what we'll be talking about today, and Enter the Gungeon. And Enter the Gungeon actually use a lot of ideas from the Binding of Isaac to create their own dungeons. But the other thing I want to note as well is that these are all different. They all use unique methods for the specific use of the individual game. So there are tiny differences in all of these. And the first thing we want to talk about if we want to understand how the Binding of Isaac created their dungeons is to learn about the Drunk Walker method. And this is a procedural generation algorithm. And for today, We'll call it the wandering pug method because because that's cool. But the rule set for this is extremely easy. You simply place a pug at point X, Y. So let's say zero, zero, and then given a move set. So for this example, we'll just use the cardinal directions, north, east, south, and west. The pug will then pick a random well, move and then move there. So let's say he picks north. He'll just move up north and then he's done. Then he'll pick again X number of times. So let's say he does it a hundred times. By the end of those iterations, you'll have a big map of places you've previously visited. So let's go over an example and visually see how it works. So right here in the middle, we have Professor Pug and he's going to start off right there. He can move in the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, west. So let's see him move. All right, so first thing he did is move to the east. And then he will repeat this process again. And now he moved to the north. So let's skip a few. So one, two, three, skip a few, 99, 100. And you end up with this. So it's a big map, and the green spots are basically the places that Professor Pug has visited beforehand. So these will be part of the map. And if you notice here, he, Professor Pug visited the north and then came back. So it's possible to have overlap between these maps. So you see it here, and you also see it here. Gosh. Uh, yeah. So... This is the wandering pug method or the drunk walker procedural generation algorithm for maps. So it's pretty easy to understand. You start at some point X, you start moving around given a set of movements. So how does this tie in into the binding of Isaac? Well, let's go over that right now. So here we have Doran. And he's a dwarf dungeon architect right here. And so his job is to build the Binding of Isaac dungeons. So he has a tool set. He's friends with Professor Pug and Professor Pug's friends. So he can use the wandering pug method when he creates his dungeons. He also knows how to build hundreds of dungeon rooms. He knows how to build hundreds of item rooms and boss rooms and all the different types of rooms that they have in Binding of Isaac. One thing to note in Binding of Isaac is that all their levels 
more so all their rooms are hand created. So it's a really good mixture of procedural generation, but also of something that's hand built. So it's, it's neat. So anyways, let's, let's start off with how the binding of Isaac gets created in a, a dungeon. So a level. So let's start. So the first thing Doran does is he's going to let Professor Pug and his friends go out and wander a little bit. So it's going to be Professor Pug and one of his friends. So they're going to wander and they're going to create a map that looks like this. So each one of these is going to be a room in the Binding of Isaac. So one room, two room, three room, four room. Blue fish, red fish, etc., etc. So you keep going, and now you get this thing. So Doran, after he lets his Professor Pug roam around, he's gonna stop Professor Pug after some number of iterations. And he's gonna end up with a dungeon or a map that looks like this. But now Doran's job is to fill it up with the different rooms that they have in the Binding of Isaac. So first things first, he's gonna pick a boss room from the hundreds that he knows how to build. So he's gonna place it right here. And then for every single other room, he's just gonna assign one of the thousands of rooms he knows how to build. So he's gonna say, okay, this is room 99, this is 701, this is 911, etc., etc., And he's gonna build them out. After which, the rooms will then populate with the enemies and the items and everything you know and love about the Binding of Isaac. So in general, that's how these rooms are created. Doran first creates, or he lets Professor Pug roam around and with the Wandering Pug method, he'll create a map or a base of what the dungeon will look like. After which, he'll just fill them up with the information that he knows, namely the different types of rooms that he knows how to build. And he'll fill them up in here. And this is an introduction of procedural dungeon generation, because in the next episodes I'll be going over how to implement the wandering pug method. And I wanted to build it out because Nuclear Throne uses, it, uses that method to create their own uh, levels. So it's pretty easy to learn and you can do a lot with it. So yeah, today we learned about the Binding of Isaac and how their dungeons are created. And I hope you guys learned something cool about dungeon generation and procedural generation algorithms. So you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.